More than 400,000 consumers no longer have access to their money because banks in China are on the verge of going bankrupt and are out of money. That is the precise figure. If we look more closely, the number is definitely higher. And when you deposit money in the bank, you anticipate getting interest payments from them. In a perfect world, the bank would lend your funds to another party while earning more interest. Savings account interest rates hover around 1%, while credit card interest hover around 20%. The profit the bank is meant to make is the amount left over after paying you. When you check your bank account, it still indicates that your funds are in the bank and are available for withdrawal at any time. And that's as a result of our fractional reverse banking system. Only 10% of the money that banks have can be kept, the rest must be lent. Therefore, even though it seems on your bank account that you have money, you don't. That is not an issue when the economy is strong. Most people don't take their entire savings out at once, especially if they total millions of dollars. The best place to hide your money is at a bank, especially given the meager interest they offer, which is typically far lower than inflation. People will rush to the bank to withdraw their funds the instant they believe their money is insecure there. However, as a result of fractional reserve banking, banks won't be able to pay their customers, leading to bankruptcies. In China, 4,000 banks are on the edge of failing. Even if a small number of those banks failed, the results may be disastrous because that could plunge the economy into a crisis that would cause the whole system to implode. And that's only one aspect of the issue. China's Housing Catastrophe China banks may face $350 billion in losses from property crisis, is the other side of the coin. S&P Global Ratings assess that 6.4% of mortgages or 2.4 trillion yuan or $356 billion are at risk. And Deutsche Bank AG is issuing a warning that at least 7% of house loans are at risk. China's economy, which appears to be on the verge of collapse, is based on the country's real estate industry. In an effort to salvage it, the government is investing hundreds of billions of dollars, but this will only be able to mitigate the issue. Even if China manages to miraculously preserve its real estate market, the battle is far from done. Why exactly is China's economy about to crash? And why are investors such as Cathy Woods selling off their shares and leaving China for good? Despite China's lengthy history, it has endured foreign invasions from Japan and Europe during the previous few centuries. And during most of the 20th century, the nation was so poor that millions of people were unable to put food on the table. 15 to 55 million people perished from famine in the short period of time between 1959 and 1961. Following the Chinese Great Famine, Deng Xiaoping's ascension to power transformed China's whole ideology. China didn't trade with the outside world and regarded it with great mistrust when it was isolated. However, Deng Xiaoping made the decision to make the nation open to foreigners and establish special economic zones where foreign businesses could enter and take advantage of China's inexpensive labor. It is preferable to work 16 hours a day in a factory than to starve to death. Economic zones like Shenzhen and Shanghai became some of the richest cities in the entire globe as businesses poured into China. China's GDP increased from $191 billion to nearly $15 trillion in 40 years. It essentially turned into the world's factory. It produces everything, from affordable clothing to cutting-edge technology like iPhones. Despite their disagreements, the US remains China's biggest trading partner. The EU is its second largest trading partner, and it sells items to the US worth over half a trillion dollars. Although China's $15 trillion GDP seems enormous, its GDP per person is much lower than you might expect. Its price is roughly $10,000, classifying it as a developing nation similar to Turkey or Russia. If you compare it to developed economies like Germany, Japan, or the United States, it still has a long way to go. The middle income trap is one of the biggest problems each growing country has to deal with. It occurs when a country has enough riches and workers have too much wealth. Of course, they'll ask for bigger pay. 
the firms who originally came to China for cheap labor will pack their bags and relocate somewhere else, where the cost of labor is still reasonable. Higher wages make producing things more expensive, and suddenly the country will lose its competitive edge of being a cheap producer. According to a recent Bloomberg story, Apple will begin producing the iPhone 14 in India around two months after it is made available outside of China. The first iPhone 14s from India are likely to be finished in late October or early November as a result of the company's collaboration with suppliers to increase manufacturing there. India is where China was in the 1990s, and it is making infrastructure investments that will make it simple for businesses to relocate their manufacturing there. Why pay greater wages when you can get the same thing done in India for much less money? It's not just Apple. According to a UBS Evidence Lab survey, a starting 76% of US businesses with factories in China want to relocate their operations abroad by the year 2020. Brands like Nike, Microsoft, Dell, Intel, and many others are among them. China and the United States are becoming tenser. What would the United States' response be if China decided to invade Taiwan? Similar sanctions that were imposed on Russia. How will American companies continue functioning with such sanctions? The majority of them, therefore, intend to move their plants. Companies outside the US, including the Hyundai Motor Group, have also taken action to move manufacturing out of China. The US has made significant investments in ASEAN. The United States aims to use the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, a political and economic union of 10 member states in Southeast Asia, as an alternative for U.S. businesses to relocate. No country will risk staying in China in the wake of the West's tough sanctions against Russia, which pushed multinational companies like McDonald's and Starbucks to sell their operations for peanuts. While it may appear that China is wealthy enough to survive independently of Western corporations, take a look at what the country is producing. Drones, electric automobiles, and smartphones. It is competitive enough to compete with the US. That's not totally true, regrettably. Even if some Chinese businesses like BYD or Huawei have had remarkable success, they rely heavily on American suppliers for their components. Consider Huawei. The business was expanding so quickly that it nearly surpassed Apple and Samsung as the leading smartphone dealers globally. But something went wrong in 2019 when the United States placed sanctions on the business. Despite Huawei's technological prowess, the company has heavily reliant on semiconductors, the key elements of a smartphone. Additionally, all of the leading businesses in the industry are American. Consider AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, Broadcom, and NVIDIA, among others. The other three businesses, TSMC, ASML, and Samsung, all have significant reliance on American firms like Candens or Sipnosis for chip design. Due to American sanctions, the company is currently struggling to survive. Over the next 10 years, China will have to figure out how to escape the middle-income trap and advance new technologies independently of the West. Will it still be able to do that after the majority of US businesses have left? That is a significant query as well, but that's only a small portion of the issue. The two biggest trading partners of China are on the verge of a downturn. Investors are selling off their euros to the point that euro hit an all-time low because they are so concerned that without Russian gas, the EU will experience a severe financial disaster. Without the necessary energy, Manufacturers will have to close, as many have already done in Germany, which will increase unemployment and decrease demand. The US is currently experiencing a crisis of its own. Since the start of the year, the Fed has been rising interest rates, which has led experts to forecast a recession. There is already a recession in the US. But what does that have to do with China? For a nation that depends heavily on exports, a financial crisis that lowers demand in its top two trading partners is disastrous. It wouldn't be a major thing if this was the only issue. But banks in China are running out of money and China is on the verge of a housing crisis. 
The addition of all these factories will provide cause the economy to experience a severe financial catastrophe. From our discussion, what have you learned? Do you believe that all the factors discussed in this video will probably push the economy into a series of a financial crisis? Please let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to Wealthology for more videos like this. Thank you for stopping by to watch. See you in our next video. Bye!